Hi, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. It's been a wild week of politics. I've genuinely had a great time watching all of this unfold, not so much for the candidates, but for that ridiculous clown car that the media and the DNC has been. These guys have spent the entire election cycle amplifying the idea that Biden sucks. The dude cannot sneeze without having an instant slow motion replay of that sneeze on every network. He's been called dumb, old, creepy, corrupt, you name it, nonstop. Articles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everybody's like, Joe Biden sucks, 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 sucks. Nothing but Biden jokes because the media decided he's old news and the new crop of Democrats has to rise up and get their place in the circle. The DNC stopped supporting him. His campaign was almost bankrupt. Basically, it was just this idea that they had to go further and further left to win. Meanwhile, Biden is just sticking around with this old timey message of like, we all need to come together. After Iowa, everyone was talking about Buttigieg. After New Hampshire, it was Sanders. The dude practically got coronated after New Hampshire. Sanders was treated as the presumptive nominee, even though Iowa and New Hampshire almost never point towards the eventual presidential candidate. Then South Carolina happened and Biden beat the crap out of everyone. And suddenly, everybody remembered that it isn't a race to the left, but a race for the country. And Biden's moderate message started to really resonate with that same media. The media had to admit that Biden was right back in the game. And then Buttigieg and Klobuchar were left having to assess. And they both assessed that they couldn't win and that Sanders' left-leaning socialist policies were a larger threat than anything Biden was going to throw up. So they both dropped out of the race and endorsed Biden. Then Biden had a crushing Super Tuesday. He won everything except for California, which went to Sanders. And we all knew that was gonna happen anyway because California is contractually obligated to sign up for the craziest far left available at any time. So then Bloomberg drops out. And depending on how conspiracy you are, he either did so because he decided he couldn't win and it wasn't worth wasting any more of his own money, or he did this on purpose the whole time in order to fracture the field and allow him to take the brunt of the attacks instead of Biden so Biden could surge forward. So then suddenly, free everything socialist Sanders is left with very little chance of winning. Warren doesn't even get second in her own state, finishes third, and people have to come to the realization that most Democrats really don't want to jump off a far left cliff, but instead want more moderate policies with some progressive elements similar to, I don't know, what Barack Obama had. This is what Biden has been preaching from day one. But it can't be that. It can't be that Democrats are actually mostly moderate, just like most Republicans are actually moderate. Can't be that. It has to be, I know, the voters are dumb. No, that's not a good message. We can't really go with that. Oh, 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 I know it's the patriarchy because the only people left are old white dudes and not women or people of color. Ah, I don't know if we can get the message across with that. So it must be, I know, it's Elizabeth Warren's fault for not dropping out of the race. She, of course, was supposed to drop out and support Bernie the way that Buttigieg and Klobuchar did for Biden. Now, I don't love any of these candidates, but this notion for some reason really pissed me off. And here's why. First, there is no rule that people have to fall on the altar for the Democratic Party or the Republican Party and, you know, just jump in so that someone can win. I'm assuming that Elizabeth Warren ran because she thought she was the best person for the job of the president of the United States. Maybe she doesn't think Sanders or Biden or any of these other people are up to the task. So why should she fall in behind them? Maybe she doesn't like Sanders and doesn't want him to get her votes. Maybe she still thought she had a shot and wanted to keep on fighting. She doesn't owe the party or anyone anything. Second, who's to say that Elizabeth Warren supporters are gonna support Bernie? They're both extremely liberal, but they're very different brands of liberal. Just about the only thing they really agreed on is that there should be a government option for healthcare and that that should be the overriding option instead of private insurance. 
Warren is far more intellectual. She had details for every single one of her plans. Whether you agree with them or not, she actually knew what she was talking about. I know a lot of Warren supporters that are not jumping to Bernie. I know even more that are not jumping to Bernie because, frankly, the Bernie bros have been kind of dicks all over social media. And I know a bunch more that said, if the choice is between Bernie and Biden, then I'm not gonna vote in the primary, but I'll vote for whichever Democrat wins in the general election. People go out to vote in the primaries because they're fired up about somebody, not because they kinda sorta hate somebody less. So to all the candidates who dropped out this week, except Mike Bloomberg, thanks for taking part in the political process, for running a campaign to the best of your ability, and for dropping out on whatever terms you felt comfortable with. Bloomberg, I'm sorry, man, but I'm just not up for people that feel like they know better than every other person on the planet. Furthermore, you dropping out kept us from harassing your campaign all week, and that really hurt our content plan. It's probably just a mass hole chip on my shoulder, but I think I'm gonna spend the weekend with a giant 72 ounce soft drink, sipping out of it with one hand, while just firing an AR-15 with a 30 round magazine into the wind. I'm glad you're gone, Mike. I said at the very beginning of this election process that the only guy that was running at that time that I thought had any chance of winning was Joe Biden. I'm not saying that he will because the Democrats have invested millions of dollars at this point into trying to destroy him and now they're going to have to try to reel all that back and Trump's going to be all over it, but he has a chance. It's not about the popular vote, it's about the electoral college and people can complain about it all they want. Sanders and Warren have no chance in the electoral college. No chance, it's not gonna happen. If Sanders is the nominee, like, it's Democrats. You got four more years. Warren missed out because she didn't build up a passionate enough coalition of different types of people. Sanders can't win because the people that are most fired up about Sanders don't vote. They're super great at Twitter though. Buttigieg would have had an outside chance in the Electoral College, and I think if he had debated Trump, he probably would have done pretty well, but I just don't think he has the juice right now to get all the way there. Biden can do it. Biden has a lot of pull in some of those swing states. So if you're a Democrat that's complaining right now, you should actually be happy because despite your party's best efforts to destroy him, you actually have a candidate that could win. And if he really wants to win, he takes Michelle Obama as his vice president, and boom, it happens. I said it first. If he picks Michelle Obama, Joe Biden is the president. But if I were a betting man, I'd say that Sanders is going to screw this whole thing up for him, and that we're looking at four more years of Trump, which I'm pretty sure is what we've been saying all along. The London mayoral elections are upcoming, and a familiar face is back in the race. Count Binface, the self-proclaimed fearless space warrior who once ran against Boris Johnson, announced that he'll be going for the London of Mayor spot. Binface is vowing to take out the trash and help London get rid of its major problems. Some of his pledges include finishing the crossrail, free parking downtown but only for electric cars, and rejoining the EU. A GoFundMe page for Binface's candidacy has already raised 1,600 pounds. Although he is a literal trash barrel with legs, Local surveys reveal that the public sees no difference between him and their current politicians. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer decided it was a good idea to threaten the Supreme Court this week. In a speech in front of a fiery pro-choice crowd, Schumer had this to say. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. His comments, given his position, as the left would say, are problematic. Criticism of any political body is always welcome. There is nothing wrong with criticizing the court. But threats from the Senate minority leader probably a bridge too far. Most people agreed, despite the fact that there were a bunch of people that kind of said, well, last week Trump was telling Sotomayor and RBG that they should recuse themselves of being involved in any cases that involve Trump because they hate him so much. Inappropriate? Absolutely. A threat? No, it wasn't. Schumer knew he had overstepped and on Thursday put out a half-hearted apology. Schumer essentially tried to get out of this whole thing by saying, Hey, I'm from Brooklyn. Sometimes we just use strong language. I wish I could get out of things that way. Did 
you just take the last bit of the coffee? Yeah, we're out. Whoa. I'm sorry, I'm from Massachusetts. Sometimes we just punch people. In news that should surprise no one, the peace deal between the U.S. and the Taliban has already been kicked in the nuts by the Taliban. On Wednesday, the U.S. announced that it bombed the crap out of Taliban forces that were attacking Afghan security forces at a checkpoint in Helmand. Colonel Sonny Leggett, the spokesperson for U.S. forces in Afghanistan, said this was one of 43 attacks that have been orchestrated since Tuesday. While apparently the Taliban haven't attacked U.S. or coalition forces, They've been taking a run at the Afghan security forces any chance they've gotten. A real hang-up in the deal between the Taliban and the Afghan government is in the form of a proposed prisoner exchange. The Taliban want 5,000 captured prisoners released in exchange for 1,000 political prisoners that they supposedly have. The Afghan government, for its part, has said that it doesn't want to do that, probably because it doesn't want to replenish the ranks of the Taliban with 5,000 fresh fighters. But this is a major impasse for both sides and threatens peace for the future of the region, which we all totally believe will happen. Seriously. Country singer Garth Brooks took to Ford Field in Detroit wearing a Barry Sanders jersey. The people of Detroit that were in attendance were pumped and Mr. Brooks apparently put on one hell of a country music show. Afterwards, Garth posted a picture of him wearing his MVP, rushing title holder, Heisman Trophy winning, total badass Barry Sanders jersey. Then the internet with its oscillating IQ levels began ripping apart Mr. Brooks for supporting Bernie Sanders. Political opinionists came out of the woodwork to voice their harumphs at the idea that Mr. Brooks would come out wearing a Bernie 2020 jersey. How dare you? Rightly so, those same people were mocked, ridiculed, memed, and then double memed for their obliviousness. Though the internet can be stupid, it's the entertainment factor that keeps the balance of this particular force. Barry Sanders for president, y'all. I said y'all because this is country. Iran has refused help from the U.S. in dealing with the coronavirus. Trump offered to provide help with containment and treatment of the virus across Iran. Iranian officials refused, saying that they truly believe that the U.S. is trying to reduce the Iranian nation's morale. On Monday, it was confirmed that one of the council members who advises the Ayatollah died in Tehran at the hospital because of the coronavirus. Currently, Iran is neck and neck with Italy for second most nation with coronavirus deaths outside of China. Despite this, Iranian government officials are still maintaining that the U.S. government is just trying to undermine them. But with a weak outbreak response and the refusal of aid, it looks like they're doing that just fine themselves. We think if they really put their minds to it, they can overtake Italy for first. Army Special Operations Command has announced that it plans to disband elite Green Beret units known as the CRF or formerly SIF. For those of you that don't know what these units are, they're elite door kicker units that are kind of like a mini Delta Force. I know I'll get skewered over that simplification of what they are, but every SF group has one company of SIF. SOCOM is essentially arguing that with reduced mission profiles, these types of units are a luxury. To qualify for these teams, members have to go to Sephardic, which is a very time intensive and expensive school. They also argue that with CAG and DevGru essentially doing the same mission, these types of units are redundant. Tim Kennedy and a whole lot of other SF dudes are really sad right now. The Federal Reserve slashed interest rates by half a point on Tuesday in a bold move to give a jolt to the U.S. economy amidst coronavirus fears. So that's cool. Apparently robberies are done just a bit different down under. In the States, it's usually some dude in a ski mask running into a 7-Eleven or a redneck with a pickup truck, tying a chain around an ATM and dragging it down the street. But in Melbourne, Australia, they get a bit more creative. A man who has not yet been identified is accused of stealing a Versace necklace off of a mannequin using two fishing rods. Authorities believe the man was able to cut a hole in the glass storefront and then use two fishing rods as giant chopsticks to pull the old necklace off and pocket it. This guy didn't get the necklace quickly. He stood in front of that place for three hours trying to knock this out. I can't even take a nap half that long before somebody bothers me. 
I know this sounds like a scene out of a movie in the discount bin of Walmart, like Mission Impossible, but it's spelled like A-B-L-E. But this really happened. Now, if only this store was protected by an alarm triggered by a laser grid, they probably would have caught the guy. Honestly, I'm not even mad at this guy. He's kind of like a JV Bond villain that's working his way up. I like the patience. Every girl fantasizes about her dream wedding. What it's gonna look like, what dress she'll wear, will it be outside or inside, what kind of flowers will adorn the tables, and blah, 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 blah. All details that Mendel Weinstock didn't want to hear from his sister, who at the time didn't have a boyfriend. After reaching the end of his limits with the conversation of weddings, Mendel told his sister that if he ever went to this hypothetical wedding, he was bringing a llama. And in spectacular little brother fashion, he did not disappoint. Five years later, when his sister Reva showed up to her wedding, there was her little brother, and next to him, a llama, dressed in a tuxedo, wearing shades. Now that's something I can get behind. For those of you that don't know, Nick married Suzanne in a full Boba Fett suit. She turned that corner and gazed upon the man who moments later would be her husband, decked out in glorious Mandalorian armor. She then looked about the crowd and saw all of his friends, dressed in various costumes. As was told, was our custom. Suze didn't bat an eye at any of this. She went up there and took her vows and said, this is the way. Reva, however, was not super psyched about having a llama at her wedding, even if it did meet all the formal fashion requirements. The joke continued when Reva and her husband walked into the reception hall to see two giant blow-up llamas sitting at the sweetheart table. Eventually, Reva apparently got over it and accepted the fact that there was a llama at her wedding and didn't let it ruin her day. But she does hold a grudge against the llama for taking away all the attention on her special day. But let's be serious, it's a llama in a tuxedo with sunglasses on. The director of the new Batman movie starring Robert Pattinson has leaked an image of the new Batmobile and the internet has already torn it to shreds. The Batmobile looks way, way different than the super fancy high-tech version that we've seen driven by Affleck and Bale. It looks more like a car that you would challenge Vin Diesel to a race with or maybe like Knight Rider 2000. That was the reboot of Knight Rider. It wasn't good. From the first looks of the car, it's not a question of whether or not it's going to have cool gadgets. It's more like, is it even gonna have Bluetooth? Maybe this reboot centers around Batman being a failed drift car racer, and he just wants to putz around town getting 12 miles to the gallon. Whether or not you like the car, I still think Batman and Robin Tokyo Drift is going to be a breakaway hit. Nevertheless, I stand firm in my belief that Michael Keaton is the best Batman. Fight me. This week, North Carolina is trying to give Florida a run for its money, albeit a very, very slow run. An 18-year-old man from Wilmington, North Carolina, decided to steal a bobcat excavator and lead police on an extremely slow speed chase. Police noticed the driver of the skid steer loader was driving erratically and decided to pull him over. The chase took place over many county lines, so all counties were involved in this massive, slow, three mile per hour speed chase. Not that I'm an expert on slow speed chases, but this probably could have been handled without even a police car. I'm not as spry as I once was, but I'm fairly confident I could run up to the side of this loader and pull out the driver with little to no effort and without actually having a police car. Surprisingly, no people or property were damaged during this chase. The only thing that happened was traffic was backed up for a little while. Which is to say this is the most anticlimactic stealing of a bobcat I can think of. Like, come on, man, do something cool. Like a flip. Or steal the Declaration of Independence. Get creative, North Carolina man. It's the only way you're gonna beat Florida man. And finally, in Florida man news, I'm not sure if people in Florida should be more scared of the coronavirus or of the very real chance of waking up to someone suckling your toes. Now I know what you're thinking. Nick, you did this story like three weeks ago. Well, surprise, motherfuckers! Florida is the gift that keeps on giving. For the second time in recent history, Florida man has been caught sucking on the toes of an unsuspecting person. The first time, Florida man broke into someone's house and woke them up in the middle of the night, sucking their toes, quickly letting them know that they're not there to rob them or hurt them, they just wanted to get their suck on. This time, 23-year-old France Beldoran, who is a sitter at the Gulf Coast Hospital outside of Fort Myer, 
was caught sucking on the toes of a 65-year-old patient. The patient said he felt something touch his toes twice, but assumed it was a nurse. Finally, the third time he felt something wet between his toes and woke up. When he awoke, he saw France sucking on his toes and immediately ripped his foot away. Security at the hospital called the police and France was arrested later that morning. For the people of Florida, I hope this guy is the same guy that was responsible for the first toe sucking incident. Otherwise, you've got a real pandemic on your feet. Wear your face masks during the day to stop the coronavirus, and then wear iron shoes at night to keep people away from sucking your toes like they're an everlasting gobstopper. And with that, I'm Nick Palmashano. And I'm Matt Finney. And this is the Bad News Network. Our news is at least as bad as the news you're getting already, and don't you think it's weird that when you're driving an automatic vehicle and you pull it backwards, you go forward, and when you push it forward, you go backwards? Also, as always, go to rangerup.com and use code BNN for 25% off your purchase. Have a great weekend.